In today's show, we're going to learn about convert path. I'm going to show you the bug that led me to getting it. I'm going to show you the terrible way that I solved the problem with a bug. And then we're going to look at how convert path makes your life a lot easier to uh, not have to deal with strings and file paths in the future. But first, here's our intro. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras. Those guys. And in today's show, we're going to talk about the PowerShell command like convert path. Convert path one is often overlooked and always forgotten by this guy, PowerShell commandlets, because it's pretty boring. All it really does is takes and normalizes a file path for you. So for example, if you do lowercase c colon demo, it's going to convert that to uppercase c colon demo. Or if you're using a relative path like dot backslash demo, you can put it in and it will take you and convert that to C colon demo for you. So it doesn't do a lot of fun things, but it's a very important tool in your tool set because if we're going to talk about here in the next few minutes is I'm going to show you a bug I was having with one of my PowerShell scripts and how I overcame the bug with a whole bunch of really complicated PowerShell. And then the light bulb went on that I could have used convert path to do it. So we're going to walk through all that. So it'll be a little practice on your string manipulation, uh, some file system stuff. And then at the end, we'll talk about convert path. Sound like fun? It does to me anyway, so let's just get started. All right, let's switch over here to my desktop. We'll pop open PowerShell and just take a look. So in my script, right, the uh, we talked about in a previous video, but the add bz file share to SPO, one of the things I did was I accepted file share source. And for this particular line, I let users type in either c colon demo, or they could type in dot backslash demo or they could type in a you know server slash share, right? So different ways they could do that. Now the problem with doing that, right, was that it was real easy, made a lot of sense to them. In my script, I had to normalize all of that in order to get it to a consistent form so I could go and iterate through the files correctly. And it turns out that there's a bug for the way I was doing it and whether or not the file share, they put it in as E colon demo, or if they put it in as capital E colon demo. And so what we're gonna look at here for a few minutes is kind of how PowerShell handles those scenarios and where the difference between lowercase and uppercase E changes, uh, you know, causes errors versus where it's pretty well ignored. So it should be kind of interesting to look at. And the easiest way I think to do that for us is we're going to just put those values in a variable so that way you don't have to watch me type them a bunch. So we'll say dollar sign lower path equals E, oh, lowercase e, of course, e colon demo, and then we'll do a slash like that. All right, so that's be lower path, and then we'll do upper path, same exact path, but this time we're going to put it in as capital E colon backslash demo, right? The two different ways that a user could have typed those in for me. And in the script, right, I prompt them, but we're just going to put them there to make it easier. So the first thing that's interesting, right, so if you just do get child item and then lower path, no problem, everything comes back. You can see though that PowerShell's like, yeah, I used an uppercase E because that's the more correct answer, but no problem, I understood what you meant. So PowerShell took care of it for us. And if we do upper path, we get the same exact results, which is what we expect, right? We shouldn't have to worry about the difference between upper and lower E's. All right, so what I did in my script though, was I went and based on what folder they gave me there, I actually needed to get all the files. So let's clear a screen. What I did was I did a get child item upper path, and then I uh, did a dash recurse. And so what that means is go through all the folders that are involved as well and get all of uh, the files out of everything from that point down. So kind of go get the whole tree, not just the current folder that we're in. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pipe it over to a select, and for here we'll do full name. As you can see there, that gives me all the files from that point down and the folders, all right, so it's a folder, and it gives me there uh, just a full path to this. So e colon demo 101 pptx, e colon demo a folder, subfolder, right, and then e colon demo folder and Excel workbook. So it's giving me all of the files from that point down, which is good because in my script, what I want to do is take all those, I'm going to upload those to SharePoint Online. But part of the problem here is when I upload them to SharePoint Online, right? I want to put them in document library. So the root of that document library should be 101 pptx, just the same way this folder is. 
but then I need to create a subfolder in there or even a subfolder of a subfolder. And then I'm going to put the different files in there um, where they kind of go with that same path. So to do that, I need to strip off this E colon demo uh, shenanigans. Okay. So that's where we kind of jump into uh, our script here. So let's go up here and we're going to change our select, right? And I was just selecting that property. And instead we're going to do a for each object. And just to show we can recreate the same thing, we're going to do full name like so. Okay, same results, same stuff, perfect. So how would I go about getting rid of the E colon demo portion of that? I'm glad you asked. What we can do is we can say, all right, let's take that uh, string that we're currently spitting out, right? So E colon demo folder is the first line there. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a replace. And so in the replace, we're going to do uh, find where it says e colon demo backslash then comma replace that with nothing right the double quotes with nothing inside them just means put nothing there so we hit enter and just like that we've got all of the files and that's exactly what we want right I want to be able to just to upload 101 pptx to the root of the document library and I want to create a folder and then I'm going to in that folder I'm gonna put my PDF file PDF so that is exactly the thing that we needed to do. And we just took advantage of replace to go and find uh, there to sub that out. Now, we could have used substring. There's other ways we could have done it, but in this scenario, I'm using replace because that's what made the most sense for me. Also remember, if this string stuff is like blowing your mind, like what? Remember, I do have a PowerShell video that's linked down below. Maybe it's linked over here if I did a good job. Um, that is available to let you learn about strings. And so I go through all the different string methods and how to do replaces and, and trims and that type of stuff. So we're going to kind of gloss over a lot of that in this video, but that is available too if you need it. Okay, so that gets me exactly what I want. Pretty cool. All right, let's clear screen. We'll hit up arrow a couple times. And now we know that we've got that E colon demo thing stored in our variable, right? And that's what I'm doing in my script or my, uh, my SharePoint script. So let's just type that in. So Replace upper path with that works just the same, right? Because just taking the value of that string and then replacing it there. Yes, we've got all this solved. Now, what happens though if I change this to lower path? So change that to lower path and change that to lower path. It goes back to showing us E colon demo. Why? As you're probably guessing based on the way I've kind of laid this out, it's because it's right here, lower path is what? What's in that variable? Do you remember? Lower path is lowercase e. Well, replace is case sensitive. So capital E colon backslash demo does not match lowercase e colon backslash demo. So that's why it's not being it's not finding anything, so it's not doing our replace and stripping that out. So this is what was driving me crazy with the PowerShell module I'd created because I couldn't control whether users entered lowercase e or uppercase e short of, you know, giving them a nasty gram that says, hey, you only type in capitals or it's going to mess me up. So the first idea that I had was, all right, well, matching is hard. So it's clear screen. And so what I could have done is I was like, all right, well, what if I take this and we're going to do some more string stuff and I do a two upper. Right, so that's going to convert the full name to upper here. And we'll just delete this off real quick so you can just see it. Um, right, so if we do it to upper, well, it changes the whole thing to uppercase, which will then be easier to match. But the problem is then all the files out in SharePoint will be all uppercase, right? SharePoint's be screaming at us all the time. And nobody wants that. But what I did, right, the first try, so I did that to upper, and then I did replace... And then in my replace, I did um, dollar sign lower path, right? Because it's also a string. And I did two upper for it. And then comma, boom, boom. And so that works, right? Because I got rid of all of the case issues because this whole thing became uppercase. And then I converted lower path all the way to uppercase. So everything matched, but now we've got all caps, that is not an acceptable solution. So I wasn't able to use that, but that was the first thing I tried. So if you thought of that, good thought. So then I said, okay, yeah, I can do this, right? I'm, I'm a smart guy. Not really, but I, I pretend to be a smart guy. And so what I did is I'm going to not type this in. I'm going to paste this over for us to see, and then we'll talk about it. 
copy, just paste that in there, is I did this, okay? So what did I do? I said, all right, lower path, so that's our lower one, replace the, um, to replace and go lower path substring zero two. So find the first two characters, right? Start at the zero character. So in this case, E, go two spaces. So E colon and replace that with substring. So grab the same exact string, but only grab the first one. So grab the E and convert that to an uppercase E and then add on a colon. So we hit enter that nicely converts that to uppercase for us. So I added that string, right? And so I just said lower path equals that. So that will then take um, whatever the user typed in and just change the first letter into an uppercase uh, letter. Enter, do that. And then now if we run our get child item like that, right? So get child item lower path recurse. Yep, that's our one. Yay, problem solved, right? It works, that is a 100% valid supported solution. Problem was it took me probably 15 minutes, maybe a half an hour to figure it all out. And the really embarrassing part was, let's set it back, do uh, lower path equals um, E colon demo like so. Oh, we had a slash on the end. So we set it back, right? Yep, okay, it's back. What I could have done, instead of all of that crazy replacing and substring stuff, I could have used a boring old convert path, lower path. And look at that, it just changes that lowercase e to an uppercase e because it knows that's what PowerShell really wants. And convert, convert path is just a wonderful little tool for you guys to uh, take advantage of because it works in scenarios like this where we need to um, normalize. It also, you ever get those scenarios where somebody hands you something, they're like, you know, the uh, the path here is dollar sign, um, something like that, right? They give you, or not the dollar sign, the, the dot path. Well, what you can do when they give you dot path stuff, same thing, convert path dot thing, and it, it fixes the dot. It says, oh yeah, the dot is actually C colon demo, and then the, the file name there. So. Convert path is really helpful for you. It also works on file shares, uh, but anytime you're doing a script where you're taking input from your user and you just don't know what they're going to type in, whether they're going to type lowercase c colon or uppercase c colon or dot path or unc, you can just feed it through convert path and convert path will always normalize that for you. So it's a great little uh, utility. I forget about it all the time, but I, I made this video just to kind of show you guys and remind you uh, the power of convert path. And so speaking of convert path, there's other path variables. We're not going to uh, do them today. Maybe I'll create a separate video to cover all of them. But if you're interested, there are there's a command like called test path. So test path will actually go and validate and make sure whatever path they typed in is correct and returns either a true or false. Uh, there's join path where if you have to go and you're trying to concatenate paths, so you're trying to say, all right, I want e colon demo and then I want to slap on a new folder here but I don't remember if there's the slashes are there or not uh, join path takes care of all the slashes for you so that's pretty helpful and finally there's split path and split path is all about breaking up a path for you so you can pull out the qualifier like e colon or uh, the other half of the non-qualifier portion you can point it at the leaf the parent so several ones to look at remember you can always use get help and then like uh, join path and then dash examples to get a pretty good understanding. And like I said, maybe I'll make some videos. Leave me a comment down below if you think there should be videos and all those other ones as well. So I think that wraps us up for today. Um, remember, as always, if you need anything, you can hit me up on Twitter, at Shane's Cows. If you're looking for more PowerShell help, uh, some formal training, I've got several people in my mentoring program now who I'm actually just teaching PowerShell one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, that's available, all that stuff. Check it out. It's on Bold Zebras. And then finally, uh, you know, don't forget to give me a little subscribe over here. Hit like on the video. It kind of keeps me going and keeps me making these things. So thanks. Have a great day. <laughs> me again. Hey, just a reminder, if you want to subscribe, click on my face over here. Or if you want to work together or just need a friend, hit me up over here. Or if really what you wanted was more PowerShell videos, it's probably it. They are over here. All right. Thanks. See ya. Might stop the recording.